Hello everyone and welcome back to the panel channel. I'm here today with Janine House from newsdecoded.org. Uh, it's the first week of January, uh, last day of the first week of January. What we need to do is uh, continue on from some filming sessions. We began on the 28th of December. It's been a busy time, we couldn't get everything done. But we are back with you here today. How are you this evening, Janine? Pretty good, thanks. Well, we've got a lot to talk about. 2023, the year's just over. I think everyone was very tired. Everyone was dragging themselves across the finish line at the end of that year. And um, one, of the, one of the key themes that people have been talking about in recent times and recent years is, is the whole concept of normal. Uh, the new normal, there is no normal, uh, get back to normal. And I think this is one of the topics that you want to discuss. Um, as it pertains to what we've been through, the roller coaster ride we've been through, and also what may well be on the horizon for 2024. <clears throat> yes, Robert, there's so much to talk about. Um, I know for many people, 2023 was a hard year, like you say. Um, I think um, it's kind of like where the, all the chickens came home to roost in 23, and so many people being sick, so many people dying, so many people becoming disabled. Um, the financial woes are sort of starting to hit as well as the petrodollar dies and um, we're moving into digital ID, digital currency land um, and the whole financial system is going quantum financial system. So there's massive shifts going on at a very um, uh, invisible level. Um, it's not really being reported on very much but it is um, and it will continue to have a massive impact on people. But yes, 2023, I think, in many years, was a year like no other. We had a continual, um, we were continually being jolted with some new um, bad news or a new revelation. Um, but there is some good news, which I hope to break today. We were, we started an interview with um, Commonwealth custodians uh, but due to some technical dif difficulties, we'll be continuing that at a later date. Um, but there is good news happening in that there's two kingdoms on this planet, and this is the news that I'm trying to share and really want to share a lot more comprehensively, is that the world has been taken over, yes, by uh, the devil's hellish agenda, and I'll, I'm about to do a presentation on that, but God's kingdom is arriving and we've arrived at this significant date on the timeline that we've been tracking with, which was 1335 days. And I'm going to share the events that happened uh, in the last half of 2023. Um, we're going to start at the beginning um, and I'm just going to share the things that happened in my life as God took me from place to place all over Australia. Nothing was planned. It was completely unexpected and random. And he spoke to me and gave a message through these place names uh, and through the people, through the situations, time, place and circumstance as I've been sharing. Um, truly extraordinary. So I believe that I can't stay silent on this and it might sound a bit strange at first, but if you read the Bible, you'll find that these are all the things that people dig into to understand the relevance of a story, to understand the meaning of the words, the meaning of the name, uh, the meaning of the names of the people, all of these things give us clues and help us to decode the meaning that God has. And um, this all began for me in 2015, as I've shared before. And um, so, Robert, yes, we want to do a bit of a review of 23. And also, uh, I believe that God um, may have given me a prophetic insight into the events that are about to take place in 24. Um, it's astonishing. I only received this revelation um, last uh, weekend. That's like yesterday. I just received it, so it's very fresh. And I'm going to put it out there. If I'm wrong, I, um, I do apologise. So please um, take it, uh, take it uh, with the understanding that I've never done this before, but it seems to me that he's speaking through this and it could... Um, be revealing to us the meaning of the events that are about to come. So keep a close watch is all, is all I can share. So 
Yeah, thanks Robert. Thanks for um, being willing to film and I know that um, we've had a long day already and we're only just getting started but we've had lots of technical difficulties but here we are. We're ready to start. Things, so often I find that things do take longer than you would expect or anticipate. Mm, yes. You know, we did have some uh, technical difficulties. It was more to do with uh, uh, a, a live cross that we were doing to someone who is uh, not actually in the same room with us but very far away and I do tend to prefer filming people uh, one on one at the same location mm -hmm. not not via phone calls and etc etc but I, I do prefer a, a more old school style I think I think it does get a better result in terms of camera work but it can't always be done that way and there were some there was a whole series of, of, of difficulties um, but you know we'll, we'll we'll get through it we'll, we'll just persevere as I said Often things take longer than anticipated. Things don't always go as smoothly as you'd like them to. Mm. So, I mean, to begin, yes. what, what can you tell us about, uh, what, what, what is your take on, on 2023? If, if we are to begin with a bit of a, a summation of, of the things that occurred and, and whether or not they may be a, 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 a precursor to what, what, uh, a window on the future of what may happen, yeah. what we're seeing in places like Israel and Gaza, for sure, um, which is a topic very close to both you and I, mm. um, we we've got to uh, maybe maybe look at, you know, what what things have happened and, and where it's leading. You mentioned BRICS as an example. Yes. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, yes. the five nations that form the BRICS currency. But now there's almost 30 nations. Last time I checked. Mm -hmm. that have, have signed up to that. So that that is presenting a real challenge to the US dollar. Um, it, it's the end, really, of um, Washington dominance. Um, it's the end of um, American um, uh, globalism, American-dominated globalism. It absolutely will be the end of American-dominated globalism unless... Um, America takes the lead with the new artificial intelligence. So as Klaus Schwab has said from the World Economic Forum, whoever uh, manages the technology will become the ruler of the world um, because it's the technology. We're going into a AI uh, technocratic uh, te uh, totalitarian technocracy. <laughs> That's a bit of a mouthful. I haven't got all the words right there. It's the end of a long day. Um, so we are heading into a world that is going to be controlled by technology and our money is going to be digital. We are going to, uh, everyone who joins this system will be partially robotized, they'll be transhuman. All those who've taken the jabs are already, have already been prepped for this. Um, but you know what, it's not going to go for long. So God is going to intervene and God is intervening and God has begun to intervene in the end of 2023 at the time of the 1335 days or actually 29, um, 1290 days according to the prophecy in Daniel 12 as I've been sharing. So um, yes, there was basically a lot of shocks, a lot of announcements this last year. Um, 2023 um, began with uh, attacks from the World Health Organization on our sovereignty, an attack on um, by the World, World Economic Forum and um, the American Storm, which is the military um, martial law that has been rolled out by Washington. And um, from there on, we, you know, we stumbled upon one thing after another as um, the digital ID program and project really got underway. Um, so as the petrodollar began to die and as BRICS began to um, arise in power, and we know that oh, one of the statistics I heard was that there were 75 nations that had joined BRICS. Um, but then I've heard just recently that five new nations have joined BRICS. So I, I'm not sure and what lay I haven't had time to research it all, but what we do know is that BRICS is presenting um, the new alternative. Um, it will be gold backed, and um, but it is also rolling out a digital system. So 
I think Bricks will be rolling out this digital system. Um, a lot of people think, yay, they're going to be offering us um, a gold back system, so that's good, but they don't recognise the digital currency, digital um, identity connection to it. The G20 nations, by the way, announced last year that um, all of their nations will be joining onto the digital ID, digital currency. Australia has been told we'll be doing it in January. We're in January 2024 right now. Um, they were saying May. Um, so heads up everybody. Um, from what I understand, we're, uh, we're on the Gregorian calendar, like our nations live by the Gregorian calendar, but <clears throat> apparently the, the Julian calendar is actually the, the calendar that they really run by. And the new year on the Julian calendar begins on the 14th of January. So you'll notice that um, Marguerite of Denmark, Queen Marguerite, who's just abdicated on the 1st, um, that comes into effect on the 14th of January when Queen Mary and Frederick will take over. And Robert, you were telling me that you'd interviewed um, Mary and Frederick and you used to live right yeah, right Mary, near, nearby. Indeed, Mary, uh, well, um, Crown Princess Mary of Denmark and uh, Crown Prince Frederick had visited Australia a number of times. Um, Crown Princess Mary of Denmark is, of course, uh, Mary Donaldson of Sydney, mm. and she lived uh, one street across from me. She was in uh, Porter Street, as it so happens, uh, half a mile from where we are right now. Um, and they, um, she, actually, she actually met him in a pub in Sydney, mm -hmm. um, a pub called the Slip Inn, S-L-I-P-I-N-N. Um, she may not have even really known who, who he was, just got talking to him. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, they were out here um, on a number of occasions. I, I recall two, possibly three occasions. There may have been more, but I think it was probably a total of three. Um, and this is going back, or this is going back probably more than just over a decade. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's a small world, and uh, um, she will become the Queen of, of, of Denmark. Um, and as you said, that, that's due to happen from the 14th and what's today, the 7th of January. Mm. So, mm. And um, <clears throat> I should say that what could be driving it, there's a lot of um, people sharing evidence that what is driving at the moment a mass exodus of CEOs and people in public office is the um, Epstein documents and the lists of names that are uh, going public. Um, and according to a um, intelligence officer who I listened to the other day, um, he was saying that there are literally libraries of books, of names, of people who've been there. So once this all begins to spill, um, the, the, these people are being blackmailed with the threat that their name would go public. If their name goes public, they're trash. Their reputation is gone. Um, they've gone to Jeffrey Epstein's um, you know, horror island where all kinds of satanic abuse and um, sacrifice has been practiced. Um, so, People are speculating um, and also sharing evidence that the royal families are involved in this. It could be the reason why Marguerite is abdicating. The Guardian has called for King Charles to abdicate or indicate when he's going to abdicate. And he's called an emergency meeting, according, according to a report yesterday, um, uh, regarding um, speculation about his abdication. So yes, I mean, we're, we're talking about right now the very end of 2023. Um, but yes, it's been, a, um, it's been an absolutely um, horrendous year, really, as the new world digital uh, financial system, the new digital economy comes into view and people begin to ask themselves, um, Am I going to live? Do I want to live in a system where I'm tracked and traced, where I can be um, controlled, um, my money can be shut down at any point, 
um, if my social credit score doesn't match or my carbon credit score isn't, isn't very good, all of these things will all come into play in connection with the whole smart city grid that we live in. Um, and people's cars won't start, their devices won't work, they will not be able to function without the digital ID system, which is something that God has foreseen 2,000 years ago and has warned us all about, don't take the mark of the beast, it will bring about 24-7 enslavement. The only thing you'll have to look forward to is a fiery destruction from a fire and brimstone, which means that God will step back he won't be able to help you. He won't be able to help us if any of us choose to go along with this um, horrendous system. Um, he can help us if we escape out of the out of this smart city grid that we live in. Um, if you want to understand about the, the dangers in the smart city, um, you can go to the Kill Cities website by Deborah Taveras where she breaks it all down. Uh, since she's sharing that these 5G towers are actually weapons, military grade weapons that can, when they're ch turned up to 60 gigahertz, can incinerate whole areas. It will just incinerate. It will take all the oxygen out of the air. And um, it will, people will present with COVID-like symptoms, but it's actually coming from these 5G towers. So it's not just the 5G towers, it's also the smart meters in our homes. Um, our smart cars, our smart devices, our smart appliances, um, and you know the everything that is smart is part of a military. Um, but this is a military program that's being rolled out that will um, that Soros Parser from the AI organisation stated will be um, a thousand sorry a hundred times worse than communism or Nazism. In, in the effects that will have on our lives. And so we're seeing that all come into view. 2023 has been the year where, wow, you know, like we're traveling along the road, suddenly the view opens up and we can see what's ahead. And so, but at the same time, um, God's been doing really amazing things, Robert, which I began to share um, things in my life which probably don't make sense to anybody. So hang in there, that's okay, I understand. I've been trying to process it all myself. Um, but I've put it up on um, PowerPoints, Robert, so that it comes together a bit neater and tied up and maybe helps people to understand a bit more what God is trying to say. He has got a message for everybody because it looks like this year 24 will be the year when the mark of the beast system, this artificial intelligence, totalitarian technocracy control system is actually rolled out. As the world economy collapses, as the, as the petrodollar goes down, this system is rising up. So... It does seem to me that... Uh, I can't think of a time in recent history where people have been more disillusioned mm -hmm. with politicians and politics in general. Mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's awful. It's... Uh, I mean, Donald Trump, whether you love him or hate him, he was a very divisive character, hence the love or the hate. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden, uh, as one example, the problems they're having at the southern border, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it is a really troubled time in the world. Um, and as I said, I, I can't think of a time when people were, were more disillusioned by, by politicians. And let's, let's hope that... Uh, yeah, we can hope and pray for the best, but I think there, there is a rough road ahead of us. You've got uh, the rise of something called left-wing authoritarianism, mm -hmm. where the left-wing just doesn't even resemble traditional Labor Party values, Labor Party in Australia, Labor Party in the UK. Mm. Uh, the, the things that they focused on, which was fairness in the workplace and workers' rights, these things have been replaced by... by uh, Bizarre modes of gender politics yeah. and uh, uh, pander into some rather obscure minorities. I'm not saying they don't exist or they don't have a right to exist, but mm -hmm. broadly speaking, the amount of airtime those kind of obscure issues are getting. Mm -hmm. As a society, people probably need to focus on more important things. Okay. So it, it is it is a very very odd time in politics, yes. and I've 
I have to admit I've been saying that for a while. Right, right, right. Well, I think the Epstein list explains all of that because what we're actually looking at when we see these Epstein lists is the list of people who've been compromised. These are politicians, these are world leaders, these are people who run the nations, these are people who are the decision makers on behalf of us people. And these people have been compromised and they've been compromised to go along with this globalist agenda. And that is why we're disillusioned because they don't leave anyone alone. Anyone in power, they will harass them and pressure them and put them under the screws until they cave, until they comply, until they are compromised. I think, so, I think a lot still needs to come out about the whole Epstein affair. Mm -hmm. I know it's been dragging on a long time. What we saw in recent days was the court order that said that th this hidden list that had been suppressed has now got to be made public. Mm -hmm. So there will be a li list of guests or attendees or friends of Jeffrey Epstein. Mm -hmm. I don't think that necessarily, necessarily implies that all of them were involved in wrongdoing. They may simply have been acquaintances of his or visited his island. I, I don't know. I think that I think that's still got to emerge to be to be fair to the people involved. But again, the, the story is very vague and hazy. Did he really kill himself? Right. Was he suicided? What's going to happen to Ghislaine Maxwell? Yes. Uh, is she going to uh, suicide or is she going to die of COVID before she can uh, dish the dirt on people. Right, right. Well, well, what the uh, intelligence officer was sharing, uh, who actually was witness to the parties with these people, who was probably the most informed person in America about this. I was listening to his story, which was quite shocking, Robert. I've been tracking with a lot of the US reporting and the whistleblowers and so on. Um, and the story is much bigger um, and there's much more evidence than anything we can possibly imagine. Um, but he was an eyewitness to these things. Um, so um, anyway, it could just explain, you know, the reason why we're disillusioned and the world's going down this rabbit hole that the world doesn't really want to go down. I mean, who wants to be totally enslaved and completely controlled? I don't see many people putting their hands up for that. Um, people don't want this, but they're being um, co-opted, they're being coerced, they're being compromised, um, they're being made to be compliant. To go, these are the leaders. Um, so we're on the end of that, you know, as the as the little people down the bottom. But we can, all we can do is come out of it. So that's the message: is come out of it, come out of the system, and get out of the system because it's going to snap shut like a trap. It has been set up as a trap, and um, when that trap snapped shut, um, and there were plans for a cyber attack to happen at the end of 2023 to basically begin the implementation of this, and there was only this weak little um, attack on Optus on the very day that I expected it to happen. There, were, there was a cyber attack, but it was only one. So the good news is that we've got ordinary people in Australia, all around the world, who are pushing back, standing up, speaking out in their own authority and doing everything they can to stop this. There's amazing, amazing people that I've come across all year. Um, so that's been part of my journey. I was led to groups of the First Nations people who uh, have been actively serving documents on the people in the, politi at the political realm who are doing things wrong, the Crown Commissioner, I was working with the Crown Commissioner, um, and then I was led to the Crown Sheriff as we, and we interviewed her, Sandra, and the work that she was doing, conducting the, the, uh, the grand juries across Australia, um, and Many, many other people, um, including uh, the Commonwealth custodian, who I really wanted to share, and I will share with you. We have done a very small interview with him, which we may be getting up, Robert. It's up to Robert as to what he does with that, but we'll, we'll hope to have an interview out there very, very soon. Um, and he is, just to give you a quick heads up, he has found 
the officers of the Commonwealth of Australia, the authorised officers, the authorised parliament, the authorised government of Australia was abandoned and a new government took over. We got a new parliament house and when this happened, the abandoned officers were just, everything was just left and he's reclaiming it and restoring it and reviving those abandoned officers and helping people to come out of the uh, Vatican enslavement controlled Australian government system that we're all battling on one front or another. When they bring out this next pandemic, we'll, we'll really know. Um, so there's um, amazing people and they're all standing up and I just encourage everybody um, do some prep work, go to Commonwealth Custodians um, and there's many other uh, groups, there's common law groups who are working, there's First Nations people who are working and um, there's some of the stories that, are, that I want to share a little bit more, Robert, um, the good stories. And these are the ordinary people who recognise that each one of us um, ha have rights. We, those rights are not given and they can't be taken away by the government. They are rights, inherent rights in being human. And when we know those rights, they're God-given rights. We are, when we have God's spirit in our heart, we are sons and daughters of God and we are free to speak. God's Christ's crown is above every other crown. His, uh, I'm just trying to think of this amazing... Um, this amazing protest by the princes of uh, Europe at the Council of Spires. This was a, um, a, a protest that happened back in history, Robert, that a little event has sort of triggered me to look back into. And this protest um, essentially uh, helped these people acted in their authority. They realised that they, we have authority as sons and daughters of God um, and people are rising up and acting in their authority and that's what I encourage everybody to do. Look at the way Jesus lived and follow his example. Ask for his spirit and, and he will guide you and, and help you. But yes, we need to come out of the system. There's no other way and, um, and help other people to come out of it as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.